HDR, which stands for high dynamic range, is a way of combining three or more exposures into one so that you can get something more similar to what your eye saw. Now normally you'll see this used for wildly surrealistic effects, but you can also use it for photorealism, and I want to show you how to do that using Photoshop. So here we are in Bridge, and you notice that we have way more than three exposures. We have eight of them. I'm going to hit the space bar so that we can preview these, and we see we've got details in the highlights, and then gradually more details in the shadows. And if you look carefully, you'll also notice that I'm not shooting on a tripod, that these are moving around quite a bit. Do I need eight exposures? Absolutely not. Somewhere between three and five is perfect, but I want to show you that this is possible using a ridiculous number of files. So I could shift click these and send them over to Photoshop from here. That's really easy, but I want to show you how to do this in Photoshop. So from within Photoshop, I'm going to go to my Automate menu and choose Merge to HDR Pro. Then I'll simply browse to my HDR images, shift click to select those. By default, it will automatically align those, so I don't need to worry about any alignment or even the fact that I didn't use a tripod. So here Photoshop has given me all of my images from overexposed to underexposed, and you'll see one of two dialogues. You'll either see this very simple one, which means we're in 32-bit, or this busier one, which appears to give you more control, but actually isn't as accurate. So if you're in 16-bit, make sure that you change to 32-bit. And one of the other problems with this image is because we used multiple exposures, some of the content was moving between exposures. I'm just going to click on Remove Ghosts, and Photoshop's going to get rid of all the ghosting between the images. If I look down here at the bottom, it's mapped the content of this particular image, the one that's highlighted in green. I could override that if I want by clicking on one of the other images, but Photoshop does a really nice job of choosing the correct image. Okay, so the next step is we're going to use Camera Raw to do our toning. Now, if we're using Photoshop CC, I can just hit Tone in ACR, no problem. If you're using Photoshop CS6, you need to save a 32-bit TIFF file and then go into Photoshop's File Handling Preferences and tell Camera Raw to open those TIFF files. And the workflow would be the same for Lightroom 5. You'd be able to just open that 32-bit TIFF. But we're in CC, so I'm just going to click Tone in ACR, and that 32-bit file which is all of those different images, is going to open in Camera Raw, and I have all of my familiar controls here. I can pull the exposure down, the highlights, I can open up the shadows, I can introduce some clarity, I can make this a little warmer, I could add graduated filters to the top and make that even darker, I could even add a color there. I have a lot of control here, and it's really easy to play around with the images, and I can use all of those exposures to make a really nice balanced image. So now let's take a look at our HDR image compared to a single capture and the difference in those two. So back here in Photoshop, on the right is the HDR, really vibrant, detailed, lots of dynamic range. On the left is a single capture from about the midpoint of that series of eight, and you can see there's a really dramatic difference between one one image, one exposure, and a combination of the eight. So that gives you an idea of what HDR can do for your photography. It can be used to wildly manipulate an image, but it can also be used to create a proper exposure with a high dynamic range.